Hello everyone and welcome back to Chess Programming with me. So, in the last lesson what we did was make it so that our board, when we start the game, gets cleared. And we want this so that we can put the pieces on and start fresh. Uh, today it's going to be a quicker lesson I think, we won't have much to do. So today what we're going to want to do is to actually put the pieces on the board. So let's go into our code. So this is the code for our game manager that we're going to be looking for, which can be found in the canvas and you can just go to the game manager script and do edit script. I've already got it up as you saw and this is what we have. So a few things before we actually start programming. Um, in the last lesson we assigned the int row and int column. What they basically are are the x and y axis. So the column is the x-axis, the row is the y-axis. So what you're going to want to do is go through each of the squares once again and uh, indicate the numbers. You have to do this step because otherwise it's not going to work the way we want it to. So for example, indicate row, you want a row that should be 0, 7 I believe. So the row, no that, that's going to be 7, 0. Um, so it is going to be 7, 0 because if we count from bottom to top and we count the row because we're saying uh, row is the y-axis actually and the column is the x-axis. So row z 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's the 7th row. So this is the 7th row, this is the 6th row, this is the 0th row. The columns, this is the 0th, this is the 1st and so on and so forth. So this one has a, a row of 7 and column 0. So you basically copy the coordinates that we, well, I have done here. So 7, 1, for example, here. And uh, we can do that after we've done the programming as well. Because for now, it's not all that important. This is the mo more important bit. So we made those public so that we can easily edit them in here. And which is what we're going to do in after we've done this programming. So in here what we want to do, or so far what we have, is a two-dimensional array which contains all of our squares. Uh, however, because we haven't actually assigned indicate row and indicate column, it's not going to be in any particular order. So we don't, we can't really work with that yet. Uh, however, what I did want to mention is that these two lists that we made, the columns and the rows list, we don't actually need them unless we really want to work with the columns and rows separately, which is why I just commented them out and uh, we, we won't need them, but we might want to use them later on. So I am still going to keep them as a comment. Um, el what else do we have? So we have the one dimensional row, which is just basically a list of all of our squares. From what I found, it isn't in any particular order and I'm not sure whether it always finds them in the same order or if it's random. From my testing, it did find them in a particular order, uh, but it was uh, in the mixed order. So we have to sort them out and uh, this is what uh, sorts them out in a way for us after we do the int row and int column. So let's just think of it as if we already have assigned all of the int row and int columns. So we have the x and y axis of each of the squares on our board. What we then want to do is, well, put the pieces on the board. There are a few ways we can do this. We could do this directly inside of our for each loop. Uh, but I found that kind of to be difficult because we have to do a lot of checking and I don't think that that's going to be efficient. So my solution to this was just to go through our all squares uh, two dimensional array or list. And I can just simply, if you want to delete the tab, you just do shift tab. If you want to add a tab, you do tab after everything is selected. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with this. This is quite odd. This should be working right now. Um, and it's not working because I have just 
put it in the wrong place. You need to put it inside of the initializer, so inside of void start. If you do that, it's going to be fine. So what this does is basically just puts the rook, for example, the that's going to be the knight, and so on, on the first row, or on the zeroth row. So it, once you save that, we can, we should be able to see the effects. Oh well, actually, never mind, we won't be able to see the effects because we haven't assigned these yet. So I am actually just going to assign those real quick off camera and then we can continue so that we can be see it more visually as to what's going on uh, or what are the results of our coding. So now that I have actually assigned all the values, you can look through them real quick, you can pause if you want to, I'm just going to do this, there we go. Um, once I press play, with the code that we've added, we have this line of code over here as well. I'm going to clear this and it shouldn't appear again. And that is good, meaning that we don't have any syntax errors or any errors that uh, it's going to recognize. So no logic errors is basically what I mean. Um, or no, not logic errors. We might have logic errors, but we won't have any other errors is what I'm trying to say, um, and there we go. So this makes it so that after the board has been wiped, we've put on the bottom row of the pieces. Next, let's add the pawns. Now, the pawns all have the same value on our canvas, uh, on our square piece holder canvas. So I'm just using those values. As you can see, 12 is going to be a white rook. Uh, let me get that off. 9 is going to be a white knight, 7 is going to be a white bishop. So I'm just using those values. What I could do is copy, paste this over, instead of the 0, put a 1. But that's boring. Um, because, well, we're repeating ourselves just for the pawn. The pawn has a piece texture of 10. So if we wanted to do it this way, then we could. But it's not that efficient and it wastes time uh, because I could do this in three lines of code. How? Well we can use a for each loop or uh, what I did was actually use just the for loop. So we can just delete all of this and simply have this. So how a for loop works in C sharp is you assign the iterating variable which I'm calling i because it's quite a common one. It's normally i, j, K, L, I think, sometimes M and N, it depends. You can use whatever you want, simply said. You can even call this that if you really want to do and kept it consistent. So for int i equals zero, so you say its first value, while i is less than eight, after each iteration, do this. So what happens is i is zero, uh, is i less than 8? Yes, it is. So it goes into this, runs it, and then after that it adds uh, 1. Uh, one Plus plus i is the same as saying i equals i plus 1. It's the, it's the exact same. But there's a shorthand in C sharp which I really like. And this, it's the same in C++. And I, I just like using it because it's much shorter. You can also do i plus equals 1. I believe that that's, that also exists in C sharp. We can test it out. i plus equals 1. Yep, it does exist. But this is the, short, the shortest way to write it as. So if we do that, let's see what happens. We should now have the white pawns on the board as well. And after it all loads, there we go. We have the correct order of the bottom row. We have the correct order of the pawns as well. There is no order of the pawns because they're all the same piece. That's good. Now we can just repeat the same for our black pieces. I've already got that over here. We All we need to do is change the values from... Oh, at the wrong place once again. Need to paste it in there. Good. So you need to just change these values over here to make sure that they match with the black pieces in our square piece holder script and also change the, uh, that's going to be the which value, I think that that's the column, the row value, that's going to be the row value that you need to change, and so that it puts them in the correct place, this is for the pawns, you also need to change that to 6. So if we run this, 
after saving it. Let's see if all of our pieces are initialized for the start of the board. Uh, well, the, the bishops are in the incorrect place, I just realized. That, that's not a good thing. So I just need to change the bishop. And, so that's supposed to be a 3, that's supposed to be a 1, that's supposed to be a 1, that's supposed to be a 3. I believe that's going to be fine. Let's just make sure. And yes, that is all good. So once this becomes blue, you can know whether the game has started. And because it has, it's all good. It's all loaded and our game is looking fine. So the next thing that we're going to have to do, which is probably going to be in the next lesson, uh, because I want to make this slightly shorter seeing as the last two lessons, even though I thought they were going to be lo uh, shorter, they still became kind of long. Uh, is going to add functionality. So inside of our square piece holder, I have the textures, but that's all I have. I'm going to want to add classes as well. So the black bishop is going to have like a bishop class. The king is going to have a king class and so on. For the pawns, I'm going to create two separate classes because it depends on where they are, uh, which opponent, ha which player has them. As the white pawns can only move up, whereas the black pawns can only move down. So I'm going to have two different classes for those, which are probably going to be quite similar, except for the fact that they're going to be moving in different directions. Another thing I want to mention real quickly, although at the start we selected that we want to make a 2D project, you can still look at this in 3D. I just thought that was kind of interesting. I'm not going to get into anything much deeper than that. I just wanted to mention it. And I believe that we are done for the day. So thank you so much for watching this video, if you enjoyed it then please give me a like, share and subscribe, I appreciate it, it helps me and encourages me out to make more videos such as this one. So until next time, thank you so much for watching once more and goodbye.